Hello, welcome to The Biblical Perspective, an in-depth expositional study in the Word of God. Welcome to another presentation of The Biblical Perspective. I'm Kevin Dunnigan, and joining our discussion is my wife, the lovely Yvonne Dunnigan. Good evening. And she is going to start with the prelude. All right, let's begin. As we continue with the teaching series, The Believer's Armor, our lesson this time is the breastplate of righteousness. The believer's armor is spiritual clothing mm -hmm. or gear that God has provided for believers to help them win their spiritual battles against Satan and demons. The Apostle Paul describes the believer's armor using the battle gear worn by the Roman soldiers of his day. Do you mind if I read scripture in relation to that? Okay, go right ahead. Okay, in Ephesians chapter 10, verse Oh, I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 10 through 17, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual for forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore... Take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist the devil, resist in the evil way, or evil day, I'm sorry, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Amen. So the presentation, let's begin. The bless, a breastplate. Number one, the Roman soldiers would never go into battle without wearing their breastplate or chest plate which cover their entire torso. Now there were a couple of, of different types of, of breastplates worn. One was a solid piece of molten shaped metal to fit over the front of the soldier's body. Mm -hmm. The second type was, um, it was made uh, a, a type of like maybe linen or uh, leather, which was overlaid with the layers of uh, animal hooves, sliced animal horns and slices of, of metal. Now, in the latter era, around Christ's time, because that was the, the, the previous use of that, um, that was pushed down and it was used to cover the, the loins. The, there was also a third type, which was called the Lorica Segmentata, and that was more of a chain mail. Mm -hmm. And the original that uh, Paul used to describe the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness was used primarily in ceremonies along on statues uh, of Roman emper emperors to show their power to show their, their might and to show them to be mighty warriors and also in the jails. And as this w was written when Paul was in jail, he was probably was observing one of these uh, ceremonial type of uh, uh, breastplates that were used um, by the, the, the Roman jailers. Now in Greek in early times, the, the oh, I'm sorry, uh, it also says uh, with the breastplate, it's also a, a presentation. You know, me having been in law enforcement for uh, forever and a day, it felt like. Um, my <laughs> uniform, the, the front of my uniform, you know, which had my, my name, it had my badge, it had my uh, uh, cer a ceremony or service ribbons and awards. It also had uh, a, a medal for my, uh, sh with my, for my shooting proficiency. Usually when I walked into a, a room, uh, whether large or small, people immediately would look at my presentation as far as the badge, as far as the ornamentation and all that it, it, it uh, represented. Mm -hmm. And of course, they would look at the, the, the tools on my, my, my gun belt, which you know, later lessons we'll talk about the, the sword and, the, and the, uh, the shield and all that. But the importance of that, that presentation is, is meaningful because 
it shows who you represent and it shows what you represent along with what what it's designed for to protect you mm -hmm. so you could say a prisoner would not like to run up on that shield uh, <laughs> you mean the breastplate <laughs> the breastplate would not like right. to run up walk up walk creep up <laughs> <laughs> on that shield that breastplate i'm sorry yeah, that's the right. breastplate okay so the purpose of the breastplate was to protect the soldier's vital organs. Same thing with you. Um, as you were speaking about being a police officer, you had to wear something to cover your vital, your heart, your, your chest, your Lungs. vital, vital art organs. The, the stuff I need to, to, to live, to, to breathe. And yes, to <laughs> live. <laughs> Such as his heart, his lungs and intestines. It extended from the base of his neck to the upper portion of his thigh. We're going to move into righteousness. Can I put a little caveat sure, on that? Sure. Um, if, if you look, look at how Pastor Fred has, has framed this lesson when he yes. talked, when you, know, you were talking about how it protected the vital organs, and he, he said the heart, the lungs, the intestines. <clears throat> when I first read it, my, uh, my initial thought was, you know, it's there to protect your heart. Yes. You know, so you, you, can't exp you can't let everything get to your heart. Mm -hmm. It's there to protect your lungs. And it's, you know, we're supposed to, to eat, sleep, breathe the word of God. Mm -hmm. And it's there to protect, in this example, intestines, we're supposed to digest the word of God and let it get into our body. So yes. I thought it was, you know, at least for me and my uh, special eye, uh, when I, I saw that, that was my immediate, you know, word association and, and how I looked at it. Yeah, I like that analogy. Yeah. Um, now, there is something called self-righteousness, which is no righteousness, righteousness whatsoever. And it's certainly not what the Apostle Paul was talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's, the Bible says that a man's righteousness is like filthy rags. Mm. If you turn with me to uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 64, verse 6, in the NIV it says, All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. Mm. Well, sin, first of all, makes us an unclean thing. It, it makes us unacceptable and unworthy before God. Uh, but under the Jewish law in, in the Old Testament, you know, when a person was unclean, they couldn't even go into the house of the Lord. You know, they couldn't offer mm -hmm. a sacrifice. God could not accept anything from that person's hands, and he was an outcast and an alien as long as he remained unclean. Now, if it says in all of our righteousness, we're like filthy rags, imagine the look, the taste, the mm -hmm. smell of how we are in our unrighteousness. Yes. You know, and when we're trying to do right, that's like filthy rags you know, for, for self-righteous purposes. But when we are unrighteous, just imagine the stench that comes from that. Well, thank you for explaining it that way. It makes it very, very clear. Um, we're going to move to, to number two. However, there are two types of righteousness that are necessary in the life of a believer. And remember, we're saying believers, we're focusing on our positional righteousness, number one, and secondly, practical righteousness. Number three says positional righteousness also called imputed or imparted righteousness is given to each believer at the point of salvation. Believers are given, given the righteousness of Christ as a free gift. And believe me, Satan doesn't want us uh, to believe that we have some clout over him. <laughs> God has given us something that the enemy does not have. And once the believer understands the position he is in, Satan is going to lose a lot of battles. Exactly. If we consider that, if we understand that, and if we take that to heart. Number four says the following verses of scripture describe God's action in making us righteous in his sight. Man, this, this, this is something... This is what truly matters when we consider what Christ did on the cross, on the account of what Christ did. Mm -hmm. Satan wants so bad for us to forget about it. Mm -hmm. 
forget about it. But we strongly have to study the word of God so we understand the position that we are in. And 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So remember that the righteousness of God that God has given us is not of our own will. It's not of our own. In our own righteousness, as it was explained before, we are unable to fight the devil and his schemes. So when the enemy accuses us, then protect your heart. You were talking about that earlier. Protect your heart with the truth of your righteousness, your righteous standing in Christ. We have a position that we are in in Christ. And when we stick to the understand that position and reflect on living righteous for him, based on living in the truth of God's word. We, Kevin spoke about it a little bit earlier when he said when we are living unrighteously, it is an open invitation to Satan and demonic forces to invade our hearts and lives in order to defeat us spiritually. So do you agree with that, hon? Uh, one to 3,000%. <laughs> okay. Well, Romans 4, 6 says, David said the same thing when he spoke of the blessedness of the one to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. David here even recognized that sin is not overcome by hard work and wrong acts are not outweighed by good deeds. The Lord does the forgiving. We do the believing and receiving. Praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, the, the second type of righteousness that uh, Yvonne you know, spoke on the, the first part, that, uh, as far as positional, is practical righteousness is the believer's lifestyle that results from them living in obedience to the word of God. Uh, it is putting on the new behavior, the new man, mm -hmm. in line with a new self. Your, your presence in action resulting is, will result in a conduct that is a righteous presentation. Um, in, mm -hmm. in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, in the NIV, it says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in the true righteousness and holiness. It's, it has the same idea of putting on a, a set of clothes. The, the, the idea is to change into a different conduct. Um, one of the, the examples that I ran across is that imagine or think of a prisoner who's released from prison but still wears his prison clothes mm, yes. and still acts like a prisoner mm -hmm. out as a free man. Um, I, I read that and I thought of what we sometimes call carnal Christians, mm -hmm. you know, that you know, they, they, uh, they accepted the, the life insurance of salvation, but they don't want to abide by the lifestyle of, of Christianity. Mm. And so, you know, it, it's like the first thing, you know, that you want to tell the person is that they should put on some new clothes. You should take off those, those jail cell clothes. Yeah. And that in itself causes a person that when they're in a new, a new set of clothes to do some inflection and, and, and feel a little bit or a lot better about their presentation, mm -hmm. which gives them motivation and encouragement to, to continue to grow. I know, you know, I have a, a couple of three suits, but whenever I put on a new suit, you know, Heads up a little bit higher, <laughs> shoulders back, chest out, or shall I say, I display my breastplate. Uh, <laughs> so uh, even as putting on new clothes will change the way you think about yourself and see about yourself, um, it, you'll start to change your conduct because you'll want to live and speak and act based off of how you look. And you, you become a lot more conscious about you know, wanting to properly represent the person that gave you those new clothes. Yeah. Amen, amen. In Colossians uh, chapter 3, verse 8 through 10, in IV, it says, But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. 
do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Now, in doing a little uh, study or research on this, I like the way Paul plays with these words as, as far as how he, he presents them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he says, anger, rage, malice, slander. Well, if you define anger, um, anger is, is, is uh, defined as vengeance or punishment as a consequence, of, or I'm sorry, anger, we all know what anger is as far as when, when you're angry, whether it's through word or just thought. Then wrath, which is right after rage. anger, also mm -hmm. called rage, mm -hmm. is uh, vengeance or punishment as a consequence of anger. Mm. Then you look at malice. Malice is def defined as the desire to inflict injury or harm or suffering on another because of a hostile impulse or, a out, of, or out of deep-seated meanness. Mm. So um, you take you know, the, the, the malice and then you look at slander, and slander, and I, I'm not making this stuff up, uh -huh. <laughs> slander says is defined as a malicious, malice, mm -hmm. false and defamatory statement or report. Then it leads into filthy language as far as lying. So Paul knew exactly what his, he was doing, not just as you know, writing an epistle but, and giving a description, but he knew for those folks that like to take their mental shovel and dig, he's yeah. like, yeah, I got a message for you too. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make this so, so deep and so clear that you're going to have an obligation to live by it. Right. So he went from every angle. Yeah. And, and, and if you case, look at... if you're not this way, you could be that way. Exactly. So he went from every angle. And, and if yeah. you look at it, those usually, those levels of, of you know, anger, wrath, mm -hmm. uh, malice, that comes from a position of usual conversation. I mean, you know, we, we normally don't look at a picture and get angry. Mm -hmm. But somebody say the wrong thing or somebody cut you off in traffic. <sighs> it's not like getting hot in here. <laughs> when somebody cut you off in traffic, you're going to get angry. Mm -hmm. And you let that anger ferment, then next thing you know, you're trying to explain to the judge your malicious acts and in, 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 in actions. I'm talking too much. Well, Go thank ahead. you for explaining <laughs> that. <laughs> so number six tells us, in a word, practical righteousness is holy living. That means you are practicing to live a certain way. The first step towards this goal is the renewal of your mind, the mm -hmm. Word of God says. By having our minds renewed, we are able to move from being conformed to the world, which meaning everybody does it or everybody lives this way, so we are no longer living like that, and we move towards being transformed by God. In Romans 12, 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but transform by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is the will of what the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect and just to explain that a little bit God does the work of transforming our mind as we submit right as we submit to his word he brings our thoughts in line and with his very own, which allows his plans to operate in our lives. So we're submitting to his will, which is his good, his pleasing, and perfect will. To put on the breastplate of righteousness, it is willingly and deliberately live day by day, moment by moment, in obedience to the word of God as it guides our thoughts and behavior as spoken of earlier as the Holy Spirit strengthens us and makes us strong believers. And for those of you that are out there in the back of YouTube land, live day by day, moment by moment in obedience. In case you didn't hear it the first time. <laughs> well, when you take over number eight. <laughs> okay. Um, now, with what she just described, mm -hmm. this type of lifestyle is necessary in order for believers to be effective in their spiritual battles 
with Satan and evil mm. spirits. It's absolutely, mm. positively necessary. Uh, you can't live in your own righteousness and think that you can uh, engage in spiritual battles. Mm. You have to live in godly righteousness. And, and you know, and from what we're, we're sharing tonight is will help you to not just understand, but, but effectively apply. Um, the, the breastplate of the Roman soldier was fastened to his belt, which held it in place. Um, the breastplate of righteousness of a believ believer must be fastened to the belt of truth, mm -hmm. which is the word of God. Not your truth, not a truth, mm. not their truth, the, the truth. truth. <laughs> Bottom line. Yeah. Um, it it kind of, you know, it's a thorn in my side as I hear people today, and even some Christians, well, I got to live in my truth. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, if you look up a couple of paragraphs or hit rewind for a couple of minutes, we talk about that self-righteous truth that uh, how God sees it. And, yeah. and, you know, that's, that's not going to work. You know, it may, it may feel good. It may sound good. Um, it may even give an individual a sense of empowerment, mm -hmm. but, it's, but it's empty fuel. It's, it's empty because in the, the scheme of things, your truth is not going to get you through these powers and principalities and evil spiritual battles that are going to confront you. Things may be cool while you're saying it, but down the line, you know, Satan and his minions are going to hit you upside the head and your truth is not going to be able to stand. Right. The summation tells us the Bible says of God's protection, speaks of God's protection of those who belong to him. In Psalms 27 verse 1, it speaks of God defending the believer's life. And in Psalms 91 verse 4, it informs that God will cover us when we are facing danger. So my comment here says that, so stand up as strong soldiers. I always say soldiers because we don't always see ourselves as strong, but we are. The Bible tells us when we're standing in God's strength, we are strong. We don't have to shrink back from what God tells us to do or ask of us. We have the almighty God with us. He is always near us. Now, in addition to the safety that we have in God, having on the breastplate of righteousness, um, meaning living a practical, righteous, or holy life, will help us avoid and protect us from many of the perils in life mm -hmm. Uh, and, and our breastplate will block the blows and arrows of our spiritual enemies. Now, l leading up to this moment of, of filming, you know, I was, all this week I was saying, okay, Lord, you know, um, try, try to be in tune with what you want to say yeah. and not what I want to say. So when I got to this part in my, my uh, study, I was saying, okay, you know, what little antidote can I come up with? You know, so I started you know, thinking about different little situations and stories. And just last night, as I'm going, pondering down this road of an antidote, um, I spoke to a, a young brother in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so he shared with me with, with what I'm about to share with you. And, and when I heard this, I said, okay, thank you, God. So we're, we were, every now and then on Thursday evenings, I, we took this uh, brother's name is Jonathan. We talk about life. And I'm kind of like a, a I want to say, quasi-mentor. And he was telling me about a situation at his job where he got called into HR didn't know why, mm -hmm. and then when, and you know, he had never been to HR before, and so uh, he gets there, and there's the head of, of HR department, <clears throat> or no, the assistant head of HR department, and the, uh, Jonathan's advocate, and the advocate is explaining what these allegations are, and they were far-fetched, you know, they were, were mm -hmm. nothing but a bunch of lies, and so he, he said he sat there and was you know, getting frustrated, he was getting angry. You know, how could this person you know, say these things? And he wasn't even allowed to know who said them. Mm. And so, so then um, he, you know, he, when, when he, the, the, the allegations were, were presented and finished, they asked him, well, do you have anything to say? And he, you know, he put his head down for a second. He's like, okay, help me, Lord, because I'm, I'm angry right now. I'm not supposed to speak out of anger. And just then the head of the HR department comes in and he recognized him as a guy that years ago he had helped in another situation outside of his employment. Mm. And when, the, when uh, the guy, the head of HR comes in, he says, you're the Jonathan, <clears throat> I thought you were the Jonathan that helped me out with this situation years ago. How you doing, man? He says, I'm fine. He says, 
Th these allegations, throw them out. I know this man's character. I know this man's personality. And this does not coincide with who he is. And the charges were dismissed. <laughs> and so I told him, I said, well, you know, you were living a, a godly, righteous lifestyle. That went before you to where all you had to do was say, help me, Lord. And Lord was like, I got this. Mm, you know, yeah. I took care of it three years ago. <laughs> and I brought you to where we are yeah, now. Yeah. But I got this. And, uh -huh. and he was... He was he was so overjoyed that he had, he had forgotten about his, his frustration, he had forgotten about his anger, and by the time he, he got back to his, his cubicle, he said a prayer for whoever the person was that, you know, made these allegations. And I asked him, I said, okay, was, what, what kind of prayer was it? It wasn't one of those, those Sons of Thunder prayer, was it? He was like, no, I sincerely prayed for the person. So, but that, that's just an example of how God will protect you when you're living a righteous, godly lifestyle. And, and as, you know, as long as you're operating behind that breast and wearing that breastplate of, of righteousness, God's got you. Yeah. And what did I just say? God is always near. Yes. He was right there and he never leaves us at all. Closing remarks? Um, my closing remarks uh, I, is that I've, I've said enough. <laughs> uh, I, I think that uh, my, my hope is that these words uh, not, are not just heard and thought about, but, but are applied and lived. And I would like to say, remember, the purpose of the breastplate is to guard our hearts yes. as we stand in the knowledge and truth of our position in Christ. Be secure in your righteousness and glorify your God in heaven. See you next time. Until then, be blessed. Emmanuel Community Church is located at 12607 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Hawthorne, California. You can find all of our messages on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click subscribe and thanks for watching. Be blessed for God is with us.